so many different incarnations of the Robin Hood legend, it seems odd that not a single one of them has explored the character's magical roots. In Robin of Sherwood, the use of real castles and locations gave the show a stamp of authenticity. But is this relic of the 80s worthy of a place on your DVD shelf? Throughout my childhood, PBS had a lot to offer me as far as gifts through of uh, television. There was Sesame Street, there was The Electric Company, and for a spot in the 80s, there was a show called Robin of Sherwood. It was a sort of a mystical take on the Robin Hood legend um, that everybody is you know, fairly familiar with. I was so excited to find out that this is actually available on DVD nowadays. It, uh, you know, it's one of those movies that evokes a lot of uh, memories of childhood and a lot of special memories about the character and what's, why, what makes the character so special. Yeah, and I understand that's good for you because you have this sort of childhood attachment to it, but you made me watch it and I'll never get those hours back from my life, Steve. Your big selling point to me was that, oh, they use actual locations and they shot on film. Really? That's the selling point? that you, The only thing you could muster up to tell me about the show is that they, they shot on film? Actually, there was another selling point that I tried to make to you and I think you, you, you managed to conveniently overlook it, but it's the genius of Ray Winston. Ray Winston, who is best known from, uh, say, uh, Sexy Beast, or uh, The Departed, or uh, King, uh, King Arthur, he is this sort of ball of British fury, and he's perfect as the crazy, raving, mad Will Scarlet in this, uh, in this show. Yeah, you could be right about that. I couldn't really get into the series. Like, I really tried to watch it. I don't really like Robin Hood legends across the board. You know, I like the run that Kevin Costner did, but that's because I was young, they just sort of... I was at the right age when it came out, but after that, they don't really do anything for me. I don't find it interesting. It's not something that I, ooh, I love the way they ride their horses and shoot their arrows. I'm like, I'd rather watch science fiction, something set in the future, or World War II epics or World War I stories. That's the kind of stuff I'm into. It'll rain tonight, I reckon. <laughs> Off you go, lads. Too much beer and not enough archery practice, that's your trouble. With this obsession that, that Hollywood and I guess just the media in general has had with Robin Hood, the story, the character, the legend, is trying to sort of blur the lines between fantasy and reality and, and, and create as if this character was real. Uh, I guess historical research has shown that it never really existed. But the possibility that he could be real and, and to sort of place that in the, in the, in the you know, the, the public psyche, they've tried to do, uh, always try to tell a story that's plausible. And so they've strayed away to, from some of the sort of mystical aspects of what it was life, like, life might have been like back in the Middle Ages in, in, in England. So that's what I really liked about this particular telling of it is that it, was, it sort of had brought in some magic, had some, 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 some Gaelic stories, had Hearn the Hunter in there, had this magic silver arrow, had a bunch of other things that were going on that you know, colored it up a little bit more. The, with the, with the, um, the Robin Hood story with Kevin Costner, there was a witch in there, and she sort of told some prophecies that she told, but really otherwise there was no actual magic going on. Nobody was being possessed, nobody was being controlled to doing anything. I think that's probably the fine line though, is because they want it to be real, but magic, as we know, I don't think is real, it's all trickery. So you can't have a real story with real magic in it, you gotta have one or the other. It's either totally fake and you have to buy it as fake and believe in the magic, or you try and make it real like Robin of Sherwood was an actual guy. Was he or not? I don't know, it's not really the point. The point is, the stories are interesting if you like that sort of thing. If you're a fan of Robin of Sherwood, maybe you'll love it, I don't know. I do not like Robin of Sherwood, Robin of Hood stories in general, so it, would took, a, it took a lot more for me to get into it. I never did get into it, so. I weep for you. I know. You know, we were talking about how it was, you know, shot on actual locations, so real castles, real locations in England, which is sort of special, it sort of brings you right into what's going on and where, where, where it was situated. It was also shot on film, which I know is, doesn't seem like a big deal, but for uh, a show of that from that time, from the 80s, uh, 
it sort of shows that there was some production values that were in there. They, they spent more money on it to make it happen, which is why the series didn't last as long as it could, unfortunately. And with the DVDs, if you do like Robin Hood, you can watch the series. Judge for yourself. There are commentaries on it. There's some deleted scenes, outtakes. So it kind of gives you a little bit more. If you're really a fan, you can get more into it. And if you're not a fan, you can just turn it off and go watch Star Wars. Well, I mean, so it really worked for me. I really enjoyed it. It's, um, I, I, it's sort of a nice thing to sort of have come back from my past. So yeah, it's definitely going to make its way onto my shelf. I understand that if you're a fan of Robin Hood, you probably really like it. So I'm just going to say, go out and rent it and be a judge for yourself.